Good evening, everyone. I am Deputy County Executive Maria White, and I am delighted uh, to be with you this evening. Thank you so much for joining us for this virtual public hearing uh, and public meeting on our uh, Bike Path Project. I really just aim to provide some opening comments and I wanted to share sort of three things with everybody. The first one is that County Executive Mark Polencars regrets very much that he is not able to join us. And I, I really want to, to kind of underscore the importance that the County Executive has placed on the redevelopment of this property and on the bike path specifically. So when Mark Polencars first took office in January of 2012 as our County Executive, he has made the investment uh, in this property for the purpose of acquisition and the development of a 21st century industrial park, really one of the, the top priorities of his administration. And included as part of that project is the continuation of this bike path. Um, so that brings me to my second point, which is that um, Erie County, as you know, plays an active role, or as you may know, plays an active role in the uh, Buffalo and Erie County Greenway Commission. And we have envisioned for some time now that we would have a contiguous trail going from the northern end of the county in Tonawanda near Isleview Park, all the way down to the southern end of Erie County in Evans and Angola. And we have envisioned that a trail system would go right from that very top of the county all the way down to the southern part of the county. And uh, with this project, we are beginning to, or continuing, I should say, rather to fulfill that vision. So there are numerous places along the county's shore where we still have interrupted segments that are not connected by the bike path, but, um, but this is one important connection point between uh, the city of Buffalo and the Woodlawn Beach State uh, State Park. So, uh, so we are really thrilled to uh, participate in uh, in a planning process and in the execution and implementation of a bike path that fulfills that uh, that ultimate greenway vision for the public to have access to the waterfront uh, all along the entire shoreline. Um, and then the third and final point I'd like to share, Ed, uh, before I turn it back over to you guys, is that this bike path fulfills a commitment that was made by Tecumseh, um, the, proper, the present property owners of some of the land um, that they made to the people of the city of Lackawanna and frankly to this community. All of the land on this property was donated from uh, for the bike path was donated by Tecumseh to the Erie County Industrial Development Agency. And that commitment on the part of Tecumseh has extended now to beyond the existing bike path, which we have already, to uh, the additional trail system, which we will talk about this evening, uh, that, that hopes to connect the, the end of the current bike path to Woodlawn Beach State Park. And I really want to thank Tecumseh, who has been just a terrific partner in that effort. You know, the bike path represents really what was the first public infrastructure project on this property in nearly its 100 year history uh, and and they were so dedicated to getting uh, the public access to the community that that land was donated for that effort. Um, so really I think with that I'm excited to see how the project unfolds and uh, the future location of the bike path extension and um, and I really want to thank everybody again for coming and and tell you how much we look forward to your participation participation and your comments. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks, Maria. Now we're going to turn it over to John Capolino from the IDA. Great. Right, uh, thank you, Maria and Ed. Uh, great to be here tonight, uh, as always, with everybody. Um, uh, if you could look at your screen there, there's a great shot, uh, aerial view of the site um, as it stands pretty much today. Uh, a beautiful day that day out uh, in Lackawanna. So next slide. We kind of covered that. That was uh, Maria, who you heard from, and then uh, myself. So I'm going to give a little bit of an overview on the overall uh, Bethlehem property. Uh, then obviously Ed and his team are going to talk specifically about 
uh, the corridor and the bike path, path op options we'll be talking about. And then obviously we'll have some, some good, hopefully, uh, public comments from everybody, opportunity for that. So next slide. So quickly, just uh, to give everyone a little bit of a kind of overview and kind of setting the site here. Uh, so this is the former Bethlehem Steel site primarily. Uh, the focus, I think, for you on the little tan area there is the land that uh, we purchased through our Industrial Land Development Corporation, 150 acres. Uh, people tell me, oh, you guys uh, bought a lot of the land out there at the site. The, the full site is over 1,000 acres, so we really own a nice piece along the front of the property, uh, but a significant portion, as you can still see from the uh, aerial, is still owned uh, by the uh, Tecumseh that uh, Maria talked about. Uh, one thing I did want to point out uh, on the slide here is you can see the bike path, which we'll talk about uh, a little further. Existing bike path does run along the front of that tan area, uh, and you can see some rail on there. That was part of the kind of pre-projects that we needed to do was to remove that rail so we could get the existing bike path uh, where it's at presently located today. Uh, next slide. So a little timeline, I think uh, important to kind of always go back and understand a little bit of kind of how we got to where we are today. Uh, but really back in 2012, uh, as Maria mentioned, uh, the current county executive was very dedicated uh, and started to uh, allocate funding uh, for various projects out on the site. Uh, my agency got involved as part of an overall effort to try to bring redevelopment to that property. Uh, there was different things that happened all the way through uh, kind of the, uh, our purchase and some of the uh, brownfield cleanup that was done. Uh, we're also in the process of doing a master plan and finalizing that uh, for the site for the industrial park portion of it. Uh, and then also, um, if you look kind of towards the middle right side of the slide, uh, there's a box there that says shoreline bike path uh, groundbreaking ceremony. So next slide. I did want to take a quick moment and highlight uh, some of the things that are occurring on the on the property. Uh, many of you may have uh, seen on the news, hopefully, or read in the paper. Uh, we had a great uh, topping off event uh, actually yesterday uh, out at the property. The orange uh, box there on your screen is a site along the new Dona Street extension uh, that a company called TMP Technologies is building a 380,000 square foot facility there. Uh, going to be employing hundreds of workers uh, in their uh, assembly manufacturing facility. Uh, I think I'm one of the masked people in the helmet there, if you can pick me out. Uh, but we were there yesterday. We had a nice topping off event, signed the beam a great, a great day. Uh, I think we're planning on, you know, more of these events, obviously, as companies come along and redevelop the property. So it's an interesting synergy of we want to see public access along, you know, this trail and others, and also... Uh, we want to have opportunities uh, there for people to uh, work uh, and bring production back to that property. Next slide. So as we mentioned uh, earlier, we did have a groundbreaking on the portion of the shoreline trail that exists there today. Uh, for those of you who may have uh, been on that trail or those of you who haven't, it really connected uh, to the north at the city of Buffalo line uh, to an existing trail. Uh, and it ran down to the south, pretty much along the front of the old Bethlehem Steel property, paralleling Route 5, uh, all the way down to Dona Street, or uh, for those of you who are daily Route 5 travelers, the Speedway gas station is right there at the light, right at the corner of uh, the new Dona Street. Uh, and that's really where the bike path uh, presently terminates. As we'll talk about later today, uh, we're really excited about the next phase when it eventually uh, take that bike path and extend it from its current terminus uh, down towards uh, Woodlawn Beach State Park. Uh, so I drive there a lot. It, it is uh, quite a sight to see, you know, if you've driven that for the years, you remember, you know, the fence and uh, the old steel plant. Uh, now there's no fence and you see people out there, you know, walking, pushing strollers, riding bikes. So it is a great sight to see and really speaks to kind of that future use that we could imagine for the property. Next slide. Just quickly, uh, Dona Street Extension, uh, so this, as we talked about, was the first public road uh, that we figured to be put on this property in over 100 years. Uh, this property has been involved in steel production since the late 1800s. 
Uh, so it was really an interesting uh, process to go through to put a public road uh, onto the property. I did want to thank uh, the mayor and the folks from Lackawanna who uh, have agreed to uh, take that road over as a city road. Uh, so right now, uh, the section of that uh, new road from Route 5 uh, in towards where you see it terminates it's kind of where that solar field is, and there's a building back there, which is welded to, uh, is a fully serviced uh, public street. Uh, and so uh, great progress as we continue to move forward with the property. Next slide. One of the things I did want to mention is that we are presently in discussions with Tecumseh, the current landowner, to expand our purchase of property out on the site. Uh, if you look, remember that first map that had the tan area, uh, we are looking at purchasing the green area, the light green area that's on the map, uh, which is really just adjacent to immediately contiguous to the, our current holdings, uh, which would take our LDC uh, land property purchase from basically the terminus of the current bike path down towards uh, and over Smokes Creek towards the railroad viaduct where the railroad goes over the top of, of Route 5. So we're really excited about that. We think it will give additional opportunities and obviously uh, that front frontage along Route 5, then we would have the ability to do some uh, great projects and economic development along there. Next slide. So just quickly, um, as we mentioned, this is uh, one of the potential routes I think that uh, Ed will talk about, but really just extending that trail, how do we get to the terminus, which is, is Woodlawn Beach. So part of our agency's mission and one of the reasons why we're here today was we did engage uh, Ed and his team, who you'll hear from later, and basically saying, hey, we know the bike path ends where it is today. We know where it wants to end up. Uh, how do we get there? And so I think will be a lot more discussion about that later. Uh, next slide. Just quickly, a couple things that are happening uh, to come this uh, next year or so. As we mentioned, um, right now we're talking about this bike path and we had issued this uh, proposal and Ed's team is working on that for us. Uh, the property purchase we mentioned. We're also right now in the process of developing some actual signage and wayfinding for the park itself. Uh, right now, uh, we haven't really branded the new industrial park, so we're working on that with a local marketing firm. So very, very near future, we're hoping to roll out kind of some new branding uh, for the site as we redevelop it. And there's also going to be new infrastructure, potentially a new road into the property of Odell Street and also at Ridge Road, kind of fixing up that entrance to the park. Next slide. Uh, one thing I did want to mention, uh, which we have secured, which is some uh, funding to do uh, landscaping, uh, planning along the existing bike path. Uh, that would include, obviously, landscaping treatments, uh, wayfinding, signage. We're also, I think, really interested in the opportunity to uh, use some historical artifacts uh, along this area, kind of highlighting the legacy uh, of that site, uh, similar to what you see, I think, up north uh, of this site along the Outer Harbor and some of those areas that you see, so very similar to that. And we're pretty excited about uh, that uh, going to be taking place uh, hopefully later this year with the, the planning and then um, you know, getting the actual improvements and things done uh, in the near future. Next slide. Just quickly on the overall site, we are also working with some developers about uh, putting up some more buildings, uh, potentially a new spec building uh, along Dona Street, and then our net zero building, which I wanted to briefly highlight. Next slide. So our net zero building, if you look at the uh, upper right portion of your screen, you'll see an orange area. Uh, that is where we're hoping for a site for our new net zero building. Uh, a lot of people have asked about, well, what does net zero mean? Really what it means is the building will produce and the site will produce uh, enough energy uh, that it would be of zero consumption. We're hoping it would actually be a little bit net positive. Uh, if we can pull this off, uh, we'll be the first uh, net zero a light manufacturing multi-tenant facility that we know of in the country. Uh, we've been working on this with the Department of Energy, uh, who gave us some uh, funding for the design and others. Uh, the interesting thing is we think that, uh, you know, really the technology all works from an energy perspective. Uh, we're just looking for investment investors. Uh, so hopefully uh, we'll have some great news about uh, a new net zero building that would be uh, located on the site as well, which would really set the tone for Kind of, hey, this is new manufacturing, you know, modern 
uh, net zero energy, sustainable uh, design that we're looking for as well on the property. Next slide. Uh, I did want to thank everyone tonight again for having me uh, speak just briefly. I thought I hope everyone enjoyed the brief overview, a little bit about uh, the site and what we're planning. Uh, next slide. Again, just quickly, we are going to have a public comment period, uh, and I think those will be accepted up until uh, August 20th. Uh, we will have a uh, tab on our website that will allow uh, people to continue to comment uh, and submit information uh, as we move forward. So with that, um, I did want to take a minute and introduce Ed Flynn, who's been uh, the head of the, the team from uh, LaBella Associates who is doing the uh, next part of the program. Uh, so thank you, Ed, and take it away. All right. Well, thank you, John and Maria, for that introduction. And uh, like we said when we first uh, met with you, we really want to be part of this project because it really is an important part of Western New York's continued revitalization. And uh, like Maria said, um, it's a continuous route going all the way from Isleview, and we want to provide a plan to extend it from Dona Street uh, down to Woodlawn Beach State Park. So like uh, John said, I'm Ed Flynn, the Director of Planning at LaBella Associates. Uh, we have been engaged by the county to put together a strategy to um, extend the Shoreline Trail. Uh, we have a team which includes Trowbridge Wolf Landscape Architects as well as Boyd Albert Architects. Um, and with me today from LaBella, I have Derek Kane, Mike Coquite, Phil Thompson, and Rob Nuparelski. Uh, from Trowbridge Wolf Landscape Architects. I have Margot Chutin as well as Lauren Butts. Um, and they will, some of those folks will be speaking during the presentation. Um, as you see, uh, we have a Zoom meeting. It is not a live meeting and I, we just hit more than 50 people. So we obviously could not have a live meeting. Um, and so just some things to remember. Uh, this uh, presentation is being recorded. Uh, we will be able to put that link on the Erie County IDA website tomorrow at some time. So folks that couldn't attend tonight can watch the full presentation on, the, on their website. Uh, we will also um, take this presentation, turn it into a PDF, and we can also put that on their website as well. Um, we currently have um, everyone but the folks that are speaking on mute. Uh, we will, um, at the end of this the session, we will um, take questions via chat. So. Uh, first, if you could uh, have your questions and have those questions go through chat. If you know where that is on your screen, it could be on the bottom, on the top, depending on how you have your, your Zoom set up. Uh, but ask questions uh, using chat. We'll go through those chat questions. And then when we're done with those chat questions, we will unmute folks who can't use the chat if they're on a telephone, and they'll be able to ask questions as well. So we do have a lot to, to go over tonight, um, but I know uh, you're looking on your computer screen, so we want to get right to the point with some of the information, which we'll do. But I want to talk about who is involved, who's the team that's working on the project, uh, not just the consultant team, but uh, our partners at Erie County and others. Um, then I'm going to go over an overview of the project so people have an idea of what we're trying to do, as well as the goals and the objectives of the project. Then we've come up with three initial, initial alternatives, which we will discuss in a little bit more detail so you understand the alignments um, and some of the uh, details of those routes. And then we're going to uh, provide some information on how you can stay engaged in the project through going, uh, you know, looking at this presentation tonight and how you can stay engaged because um, we're kind of in the middle of the project, but we're uh, intending to have another public meeting uh, before we finish up the project. Then we'll talk about some next steps in terms of the schedule and what we're going to be doing, and then we'll have time for the chat and questions and comments. So we are working with an advisory committee of uh, eight individuals, uh, which is a combination of folks from Erie County uh, Planning, uh, the IDA, the Greater Buffalo Niagara Regional Transportation Council, as well as uh, the City of Lackawanna. Uh, they are working with us, providing us information and giving us feedback on the project. Um, so we are reflective of what they need and what the community needs. As I said, we are, have a full multidisciplinary consultant team. 
uh, led by Labella. We also are working with Trowbridge Wolf Landscape Architects and Floyd Albert. And we are providing all of the uh, consultant and uh, information that the advisory committee needs to make decisions uh, on the project as we move forward. Uh, we have been working with multiple stakeholders um, over the last three or four months. Uh, primarily, we've been working with uh, a lot of the property owners um, where the tr trail is going through. Uh, so Maria mentioned Tecumseh, that we've talked to them multiple times because we have one of the alternatives going through their property. But the, you can see there's some other properties uh, in the screen that we're also talking to. We also have engaged uh, both the city of Lackawanna and the town of Hamburg uh, because the project runs through their um, communities. We have also talked to public authorities like the Department of Transportation, as well as New York State Parks, who owns Woodlawn Beach State Park. Uh, we started to talk to some trail groups. We probably are gonna talk to some more after this meeting, but we've talked to Go Bike Buffalo uh, to date. And we anticipate we're gonna talk to others after this meeting, especially after we get some of the public input uh, and comments. And of course, the, the last uh, part of the team are the, is the public, uh, the folks that uh, are listening tonight. Uh, we want to make sure we engage the public, get their information, uh, and incorporate some of their comments uh, into our consideration of the trail of alternatives. So I want to talk a little bit about the objectives and the overall goals. Um, as Maria said, um, this is part of a longer term project where um, Erie County and multiple partners have put together and implemented plans to have a shoreline trail of going all the way from Isleview Park in the city of Tonawanda, going through Tonawanda, Buffalo, and Lackawanna. It now ends at the Dona Street extension, which was just constructed last year. Um, what we're focusing on is extending it from that Dona Street extension down to Woodlawn Beach State Park. And we're looking at um, different alternatives on how to do that. Uh, we also have to recognize that it's part of our larger regional trail network. Um, so we want to make sure that we incorporate and connect to those trails as well, uh, because the trail network is becoming pretty uh, significant in Western New York. And I think the use of it has been pretty significant as well, especially during the COVID uh, crisis. So our objectives are to come up with either a preferred route or preferred routes and alignments uh, for the extension from Dona Street to Woodlawn Beach State Park. Uh, as part of that, we're gonna come up with preliminary engineering plans uh, for the project. That will then help us develop some cost estimates for the different alternatives that are going to be proposed. And then once we know that, then we can start to align the project for funding opportunities. There's multiple funding opportunities that we're going to uh, look at and we have essentially uh, design this project so it's tailored for those funding opportunities. And of course, the most important objective is to engage the community, uh, which we're starting with tonight. We're going to have another public meeting uh, and we have some other opportunities for that as well. The project benefits, I think I'm probably preaching to the choir for a lot of the folks that are on this call, um, but the Shoreline Trail provides an incredible quality of life for Western New York. Um, I think a metric that we can look at uh, today is that since the COVID crisis, uh, bike sales have gone up 121%. Bike ridership has gone up 100%. Um, so having that shoreline trail, being able to get out of the house and have some exercise during uh, this, uh, this time is very important. And it's been important even before that. Uh, one of the things we definitely want to do is provide access to the waterfront, which most of the shoreline does, um, but this provides access to a beach uh, and a really great natural resource um, in, at Woodlawn Beach State Park. And then like John was talking about, uh, and Maria, uh, it provides opportunities for economic development. Uh, nowadays, both employers and residences or residents are looking for uh, shoreline trails, or not shoreline trails, but trails in general. It's an, an, an amenity that folks want nowadays. Uh, and developers who develop properties uh, want to make sure that they also include that as well. So I'm going to give you a little bit of information on the uh, three alternative uh, alignments, but I want to 
Uh, also talk about some of the challenges and opportunities that we have with these trail alignments. So just briefly, and I'm gonna talk about these in a lot more detail in, in future slides, but we've come up uh, to date with three different alternatives. Uh, there's two alternatives that essentially go down Route 5 from Dona Street, uh, head west on Blaisdell Creek, then head uh, south on Woodlawn Avenue, as well as uh, some property on Woodlawn uh, Beach State Park. Another one is a little different. It goes along Smoke Creek and then goes south um, along uh, the rail line and then goes through Woodlawn Beach State Park. Um, the first two are about two miles, while, while as uh, alternative three, uh, which is the third one, is about 2.6 miles. We have had some challenges and opportunities that we want to recognize and it, we have incorporated into the analysis of the project. Uh, first of all, more than 43,000 cars a day or vehicles uh, use Route 5 in this section uh, per day. That is more than uh, Route 400, which provides access to East Aurora. And so with that recognition, we wanted to make sure that we had no on-road sections of the trail. We also want to make sure we provide safe and enhanced crossings from the residential districts across Route 5 to the trail. One thing that is present is um, a significant amount of active rail uh, within the corridor that we're considering. Um, so as you can see on this screen over here, these are all rail lines and uh, where rail cars are stored. Um, they're probably not your typical rail line. They're not uh, rail lines where you have trains going at 100 miles per hour. They're really mostly for storage. Um, but that's something we need to make sure that if the trail is going through this section, that we can cross those rail sections safely. Another uh, Opportunity we have that also is a challenge are the creeks. There's three different creeks, um, Smoke, Blaisdell, and Rush. And so we wanna make sure we have safe crossings uh, across those. Uh, but they also provide um, some visual interest as well as opportunities for habitat restoration along those creeks. The landscape is very interesting. Uh, so as you know, is former Bethlehem Steel site. There are former rail lines like I just talked about. Uh, which provide some interest, but they also provide opportunities to reuse and um, repurpose some of those properties. Uh, you have the wind turbines in, in view, as well as Lake Erie. Uh, some of the land, this, is, this was taken in the summer, does not have a lot of greenery, so we want to make sure that we have opportunities for, to provide additional landscaping uh, in that area. And then, of course, at the end of the trail, um, in this section, you have an incredible natural resource, which is Woodlawn Beach State Park. And um, you could be on this beach and not realize that you're right in the middle of a very heavily urbanized area, uh, a Ford stamping plant uh, just across the street, uh, just a great resource and a great recreational opportunity for Western New York residents. So I, I discussed in general what the route alignments were. Uh, go in a little bit more detail about the routes. Uh, so you have some ideas in terms of what are some of the uh, alignments as well as some of the features along the route. So what I'm doing is I'm separating these routes into two sections, a north section and a south section uh, because the routes are very vertical and your screens I think are horizontal. So I wanted to make sure I split it up into two. Um, so I wanna start off with alternative one and two, and I'm putting those two together because they are somewhat similar. Uh, but that route starts off, um, just to give you a little bit of idea of where we are, uh, this is the Dona Street extension here. This is Route 5. Uh, this is Madison Avenue right here. This is obviously Smoke Creek, which is labeled. Um, and um, these are all the rail lines down here as well. Um, so as uh, we said, the last extension of the Shoreline Trail ended at Dona Street, and this, uh, the, objective of, the objective of this project is to extend it down to the Woodlawn Beach State Park. So that's where we start the trail. It starts along Route 5, and it's off-road, it's not on-road. Um, it then goes south and goes over that railroad bridge that I had in one of my uh, screens there, 
Um, it's abandoned right now and we're going to repurpose it and use it for a pedestrian and bike bridge. And it goes right over Smoke, Smoke Creek. What this is, is the trailhead. Uh, so that's the TH. And that's an area where you will have some parking. I think I saw one of the first chat questions that came in was, should there, can't you have parking near the Dona Street extension? This new trailhead that is planned here will provide that, as well as information on the trails and their alignments. So the trail then goes south and we get to a point, for those of you familiar with Lackawanna, there is a overpass for a rail, uh, for the rail line. And at that section, we would have to put a pedestrian and bike tunnel that we would need to bore through uh, that berm that supports the rail lines. Uh, that's uh, something that when we talk to the railroad, that's what they prefer. And it also is the most uh, cost effective. Uh, as you can see, this starts in Lackawanna and then it proceeds through to the town of Hamburg. And just so when I go to the next slide, you can look at this blue roof to understand where we are when we go to the next slide. So not to the next slide, but when I go to the southern portion. We also have some slides here to show the character of the area we're going through. So here's that picture of the rail bridge that we were, would repurpose for the pedestrian and bike um, access. Here's when you're standing on that bridge looking down Smoke Creek and you can see nature has already started to take over there and uh, you have some greenery there already, but some really nice views. And then this is the berm that supports the rail line and this is where we would need to bore through for the tunnel. So that was the north section. This is the south southern section. Uh, we end up as we've gone through up here uh, where the train tracks were, we've come through the tunnel. Uh, this is where one and two uh, diverge. So one stays on Route 5 off road, then goes um, west along Blaisdell Creek and a private right of way. Route two uh, takes a little bit of a different route, goes behind the Sweeney St Steel property um, to a point right here where they both meet. At, at this point, uh, they need to have a, we need to have a pedestrian bridge which goes over Blaisdell Creek. That then goes south along Woodlawn Avenue. Uh, that would need to be striped. Uh, we're going to look into whether we need to have some additional pavement, but at this point, uh, we think it can be striped for both cars and pedestrians and bicycles. It then transitions into a roadway owned by uh, New York State Parks, which is, which is part of the Woodlawn Beach State Park. And it ends up down here, which you can't, kind of, you can't really see on this slide, at the Woodlawn Beach um, State Park Lodge. As far as the character along there, uh, for those, again, for those of you familiar with uh, this part of Lackawanna and Hamburg, uh, this section has a lot of traffic, uh, but we would try to keep the uh, trail on this section on the on-road, uh, on the off-road section, so you wouldn't have to deal with the traffic. This is a section going west towards uh, the lake. You can see the windmills here uh, along Blaisdell Creek. This is Blaisdell Creek right here. And then this section down, down here shows uh, a view, if you were to look down uh, the Woodlawn Beach State Park roadway going towards the, uh, the lodge. Okay, so those were, those were alternatives one and two, which are, were pretty simple to describe. Alternative three is a little bit more complicated uh, because it does go within the interior of the uh, properties that were the former Bethlehem Steel. Um, so that also starts at the Dona Street extension. It goes south and utilizes that rail bridge and it at the trailhead is where it starts to turn. And it follows the path of Smoke Creek. It's also called Smokes Creek, some people call it that. Um, all the way up to a point here where it has to um, cross a rail line. It has to cross a rail line here as well. Um, so we're looking at at grade crossings. If we do at grade crossings, there would need to be some um, guard protection as, where, as well as some warnings for when the rail goes through there. But like I discussed, uh, it's not at high speed rail, uh, so we think it can be safe. We are also looking at potentially having pedestrian and bike bridges as well, but the preference is to have at grade crossings at these um, intersections with the railroad. 
after it intersects this railroad, it starts to go south um, and follows, essentially follows the rail lines uh, going south towards the beach. Um, at, in this section, we are proposing to have a 10 foot berm um, for a couple of reasons. One reason, as you can see, I'm trying to show here is if you raise the trail about 10 feet, your views of Lake Erie are improved significantly. You'll have several points along this trail where you will be able to see Lake Erie. Um, also, because these are private properties, we're gonna to need to have fences on both sides. Um, so by raising uh, the trail, uh, you won't feel like you're in um, the middle of two fences. Um, so we wanted to make sure we had that opportunity. As far as the character, we've looked at uh, this view already over the uh, rail bridge uh, that we would repurpose. Here's another, um, point further down where it, the Smokes Creek occurs and you have some really nice views of the industrial landscape as well as uh, part of Smokes Creek. At this point, as you can see, uh, we're at grade and you can see a little bit of Lake Erie here, but you can obviously see the wind turbines as well. And so if you raise it, we think we can increase the uh, viewing opportunities for Lake Erie. And finally, uh, alternative three, the southern section. Uh, we go from the section where we have the raised berm here. We start to go south. Um, at this section where we cross Blaisdell Creek, we fortunately do not need a bridge there uh, because there already is a, a land bridge there and we can utilize that. And then we will, we will essentially follow the eastern and southern portions of both Rush Creek and Blaisdell Creek um, all the way until we get to uh, the roadway that we talked about before and go south to the lodge at Woodlawn Beach State Park. Uh, there, we would like to make sure we connect to some of the trails that are already existing there and integrate it there. We'd also like to make sure that we have the traffic a little slower in this section because we are interacting with some of these trails here as well. As far as character, um, both the first and second images here are images of Rush Creek, um, which are up here. Uh, and then of course, at the end, uh, you can reach uh, the beach and you can see the incredible views there, the incredible opportunities for recreation, uh, especially if you're a bike enthusiast, you probably also like other types of recreation as well. So I've given a little bit of information on a 2D level view in terms of what the trails are in terms of their alignment. Uh, but I'm gonna turn it over to Margo Chutin from Trowbridge Wolf Landscape Architects to talk a little bit about um, some opportunities for amenities and other um, things like overlooks. So Margo, can I turn it over to you? Uh, Mike, can you unmute Margo, please? Gotta find that right. One second, Margo, sorry. So Margo, you need to be un unmute if you first. Okay. There you are. Okay. Okay. Thank there you. There we go. <laughs> sorry. All set, Margo. Thanks. So our role as landscape architects will be to um, start looking at ways to improve the experience on this trail and uh, you know really find moments where um, you know, you can take in views and experience, you know, really a landscape that hasn't been experienced by the public in a long time. Um, you know, in a lot of places, there are points, um, especially along uh, the third alignment, where you can get along uh, Smoke Creek and, you know, see some, you know, remnant pieces of, you know, the former um, infrastructure. Um, in this photo, you know, there's a former bridge abutment, um, which, you know, could possibly be repurposed into an overlook so that you can get up higher and actually, um, you know, take in the views um, up and down the creek. Next slide, please. You know, and again, you know, this is just another example um, where you can actually get close to the water. Um, obviously, you know, we'd want to try to maximize that as much as possible to improve your experience. Uh, next slide. You know, and I think it's early on still, you know, as we haven't picked uh, an alignment quite yet, uh, but we will want to look at different ways to, you know, incorporate maybe some of the structure that's already there on site in, uh, you know, as a historic uh, interpretation, but, you know, also to um, 
you know, to create an interesting palette of materials. Um, you know, these are just a couple of examples, you know, um, the one on the left is in Rochester, uh, close to the uh, port of Rochester. Uh, it's a former um, bridge abutment. Um, so, you know, I started thinking about how can we use these pieces that are on the site here. Um, but we were able to repurpose, you know, part of the abutment and create an overlook. Um, whereas the one on the right you may be familiar with is at the Sholkoff uh, Visitor Center, um, where the uh, one of the former industrial foundations was opened up to the public, you know, with a walk around where you can actually, you know, go out and look down into the gorge. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and then these are just some examples of trailheads and amenities. You know, I saw the question again about the parking, but, you know, really identifying how you get on the trail and how you access it will be important. Um, and really, you know, creating, um, you know, places to stop, you know, places to, you know, take in the sites and, and read about or, um, you know, the former history of the site um, and really start creating an identity, you know, so it's not just a, an asphalt trail taking you from point A to point B. Uh, next slide, please. Um, these are just some other examples of, you know, some of the materials and, and scale, you know, that will really start to, um, to give the, the trail and the whole experience some character. Next slide. And, you know, we'll look for opportunities for historic interpretation. You know, I think it's, it's a large site and, um, you know, it has a past and, you know, I think it's worth recognizing um, in a variety of ways. You know, these are just some examples. The one on the left is from Bethlehem Steel Stacks in uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. You know, I think that was a good reference um, and they've done some really interesting things there. And on the right is just across um, across the bridge on Route 5, you know, where the, uh, the, the trail um, more or less uh, connects to the first phase project um, in the city of Buffalo. Go ahead, next slide. And then again, you know, these are just some of the pieces we will start exploring, you know, once we've got an alignment in place, um, you know, preferred uh, alignment, you know, we can start looking at all of the pieces that will come together to build the character of the trail. Next slide. And not, uh, last but not least, you know, we'll want to start looking at some of the landscape restoration. As you saw from some of the photos of the former um, steel mill site, you know, the landscape has been pretty beat up and, you know, we'll be looking at ways to, within, you know, the boundary of the trail, you know, find ways that we can start um, helping the, uh, the landscape recover. Next slide. And I think, you know, we can both talk to this, but, you know, these are some of the trail sections um, that we'd be looking at um, where, you know, at times it's on grade, but, you know, we have to address the fact that for security issues, there'll, there'll be uh, some security fencing and, you know, we'll be looking for ways to mitigate that so that, you know, your experience isn't a negative one. Um, you know, we'll be looking at plantings um, and so forth. Next slide. And, you know, this is the, uh, what the experience could be, um, you know, along the uh, Buffalo Harbor um, State Park on the left, you know, the landscaping really, um, you know, gives you a sense of enclosure, um, but would also help mitigate um, any security fence that might be required. Um, and on the right is the existing first phase trail, which, you know, I think we will have to, um, to align with and, you know, continue that character. Next, next slide, please. Um, and then, you know, for the alternates that uh, are on Route 5, one of the, one of the um, implementations is to get through the, the rail line berm, um, which will need a, a tunnel. And, you know, we'll be looking at ways to, you know, improve that experience. You know, tunnels aren't necessarily um, the most exciting things to go through as a pedestrian. But next slide, please you know, the aesthetics can be improved, um, you know, and to give a sense of, um, you know, security besides, uh, you know, just the aesthetics of the tunnel. Um, we really want to brighten it up and make it inviting and, um, you know, really draw people to the other side. Uh, next slide, please. And then as uh, Ed had mentioned, you know, in the uh, alternative three where we cross the Bethlehem Steel or Tecumseh site, um, the trail we're proposing to berm it to bring you up uh, about 10 feet to improve the views and to to mitigate the uh, the appearance of the security fence 
um, that'll also give us the opportunity to improve the landscaping. You know, we'll have to be bringing in soil anyway. You know, we can um, use that to, to really support uh, vegetation. Next slide. And so in a couple of locations, there are, um, we may need a pedestrian bridge. And this is just showing um, you know, what the width of that would look like and uh, you know, the fence that would be required on either side for security and safety. Next slide. No, I think if, if and when you know, that alternative is selected, we'll have to look at you know, what, what that experience is, what are the materials um, that will comprise those bridges. And these are just some examples. Uh, next slide. These are some really crazy examples, but you know, I think when you have to have a bridge, you know, there's, there's ways to make it interesting and really make it a feature in the landscape. Uh, next slide. Okay. Well, it. thanks, Margo. Um, so that provides you a little bit more information, not just lines, but some information on how we could enhance the trail and provide amenities. So uh, we've been through a lot and we've provided a lot of information. I know we probably have some questions which we'll get to as part of the chat, um, chat se session. Um, but even after this meeting, there's going to be opportunities for folks to provide input. Um, so keep your eye on the IDA website, which we have listed up here. We will place on that website, like I said, the recording from this meeting tonight, as well as uh, the presentation in a PDF format. What we're also going to do is provide a, an online survey. And this survey is what we would typically do if we had an open house with people <laughs> in a meeting room where we have the information on the trails, um, which we, we have provided as part of the survey, where you can comment on the trails, uh, what you like about the trails, what you don't like about the trails, uh, which is your preferred trail alignment, uh, and then some of the things that Margo just talked about. What are some amenities you would like to have along the trail? So um, here, here is the actual link. And um, when, we're, when we go through the chat questions, I will keep this up um, so people can uh, write down uh, the link if they want to start the survey tonight. If they want to wait, the link will be on the IDA website uh, sometime tomorrow. So next steps, um, like I said, what we would like to do is after this meeting is uh, gather all of those public comments and review them, uh, incorporate some of those into the plan and consider them. Uh, like I said, the presentation and the online survey will be on the IDA website. Um, we anticipate we will need to have some additional stakeholder meetings um, with folks that are involved uh, with the uh, alternatives. Uh, once we have all of that information, we'll start to develop those preliminary plans and cost estimates. Um, and then we hope to have a final public meeting uh, within the next two to three months uh, when we have the plans completed and um, the preferred route or routes that we have um, developed. Um, like I said, we are um, making sure we're tailoring this project uh, for all of the grant funding opportunities. Uh, and so um, the IDA and their other partners in Erie County would be looking to pursue grant funding to implement um, these over time. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the Zoom chat questions. Um, before I go to those, any, does anyone else from the committee or uh, John or I have anything to say before I go on to the chat questions? Okay. And I will put up that, uh, there's the uh, online survey information. All right. Okay, so the first question was, why can't we have a parking lot at the Dona Street extension? Um, I think I've answered that question as part of the trailhead. There would be parking um, at the end of Madison Avenue, just south of Smokes Creek. Uh, we have a question about the net zero building, John. So if, uh, if you could unmute uh, John, uh, Mike, that'd be great. And the question is, what will be the purpose of the net zero building? Oh, great, thanks. And thanks for the question. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, great. 
Uh, yeah, so we would be putting a net zero building up and it would really uh, be to attract uh, light assembly, uh, light manufacturing uh, to the property. Uh, and they would be tenants in the building and they would be able to utilize the energy that's being produced uh, by the building and the site uh, to help with whatever energy needs their operations and production have. So uh, we look at it as two, one, you know, trying to attract new investment onto the property. Uh, the other thing, which is a, a little more kind of long view is a, a great opportunity to show uh, not only the public, uh, but other uh, businesses and developers that you can incorporate uh, these type of energy uh, producing technologies into buildings uh, in Buffalo and make them work. Uh, so we also look at it as kind of an educational uh, building as well to you know, educate the public and others that, you know, you can make uh, sustainable energy improvements and sustainable energy systems uh, work in our climate uh, in here in, in the region. Okay. Thanks, John. Uh, the next question is about, um, is there an opportunity to connect the trail uh, from the village of Hamburg all the way to the town of Hamburg and Woodlawn Beach State Park? Uh, that's not part of the scope of our work, um, but there are other folks on the committee as part of the Erie County planning. I'm sure they're looking into this, um, but I think the ultimate goal is to have connections um, to other trail systems in the future. Okay, one, another question. The pedestrian bridge near Woodlawn Beach has stairs and no ramp. It'd be so much easier to cross Route 5 if they could put a ramp there. Um, okay, well, that's something we will um, consider as part of um, our crossing Route 5. Um, I don't know about, about at Woodlawn Beach, but definitely at Madison Avenue and some other sections where there's re residential sections, but we'll, we'll definitely look into that. Um, okay, we got a, a nice a comment from uh, Nagowski to everyone to just say that um, they're very happy that we're looking into this and uh, it really provides a great quality of life for the, the area and great that uh, we're going the last mile towards Woodlawn Beach State Park. And I'm reading these, so they'll just give me a little patience here. It's kind of a, a longer question um, about how the routes impact industrial occupants along the route. Um, I guess we can say that we, we have been talking to the property owners uh, that have um, are involved in this project, and they have asked us to move the route, in, you know, certain directions so that um, they can develop their properties and also provide assets to their or amenities to their industrial users. Um, but I will look at that question in a little bit more detail and uh, provide some answers. Um, um, as part of what's going to be on the IDA website. So I didn't. What I didn't mention was. We'll try to answer as many of these as possible and as, and as much as we can. If we can't answer them in full, we will put a, a question and answer a session, a piece of uh, information on the IDA website. Okay, one question has to do with um, responsible for maintenance. Um, and that's a good question. Uh, I believe that would be a combination of um, the property owners um, as well as the uh, Erie Canal, uh, not the Erie Canal, the, the, the Erie County, um, as well as some of the municipalities. Um, is that correct or does anyone else have an answer for that one? So I guess this is John, I can speak briefly. I know. Uh... I think Mark Roundtree's on the call too. I don't know if anyone's from Parks is, but um, presently the current section of the trail uh, is owned by Erie County, that portion, uh, and that would be Erie County Parks uh, that is responsible uh, for doing the, the maintenance on the trail. 
I'm assuming for this next phase, uh, that, that would be the same case that we would, you know, have Erie County Parks uh, be the uh, maintenance uh, entity that would be responsible uh, for that trail. Yeah, and I think I said the property owners, and I don't think that's that would be true. Correct. Uh, I said, would it be possible to have multiple routes? Uh, we are really focusing on just one uh, route alternative, but we're looking at all three uh, to see which one would be um, the best for some of the funding opportunities. Um, and that's one of the reasons we're doing it to try to find out, you know, which are the best routes um, to go between Dona Street and Woodlawn Beach State Park. If I could just kind of quickly add, I think, you know, yep. obviously for this phase, we're not looking at that, but you know, long term down the road, it, it could be something that could happen uh, depending on what route we chose. Uh, there could be uh, additional trailheads or other things that would be added uh, as we go. Uh, but this phase would be really to get the connection established and then, you know, down the road, if there's more uh, need and funding available, there, there could be other additions that, you know, would be possible for the trail. Okay, uh, next question is, what is the schedule for letting construction and completion? Um, this project is really just an analysis and a study, um, but we are preparing plans so uh, Erie County can start to consider um, doing that, um, but I think that's a longer term effort, wouldn't you say, John? Is that correct, John? It's a long term effort over the next three to five years? I think John is frozen right now. <laughs> so. Okay. Okay, there's another question um, about the, the parking and crossing Route 5, that it's very dangerous. So yeah, de definitely one of the things we will uh, want to do is to make sure that we look at an enhanced crossing that makes it safer to cross that section of Route 5. Um, whether it's uh, pedestrian, um, you know, warnings um, or other opportunities, we will look at opportunities to um, make that safer. And that is part of our project. And then uh, Robbie McPherson just reminded to follow not only the IDA um, website, but also look at the ECIDA Facebook page for updates on the inf on information. And then Renee just had another question about how long it's going to take. Uh, and yes, it could take, um, you know, between two to five years to complete. Um, but this is the way to start. Um, and um, it's great that uh, Erie County is looking into um, extending the, the trail. So I don't see any other questions. But when is the survey monkey open? Um, is, it should be open now. If it's not, we will correct it after the meeting. So if you wanted to start filling in your information, you can start right now or right after the meeting. All right. So I don't see any more, oh, one more. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's, um, now we've gone through the chat questions. Mike, if you want to unmute everyone to see if we have any questions from folks that are on the phone. Certainly. I've been unmuted. If you're still muted, you can unmute yourself if you have a comment. Put your shirt on and go with me on my phone. No, okay, so does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask? No. Okay, I'll give it one more second. I don't see anyone asking questions. All right. So thanks everyone uh, for attending tonight's Zoom meeting for the Shoreline Trail. Um, as I said, after this meeting, you can go to the Survey Monkey website. One of the questions is uh, contact information. That is optional. You can do it anonymously if you want to. But um, if you want us to contact you back or if there's some detailed questions where you need some answers, uh, please provide your contact information. All right. So I think there's any more words from you, John, or anyone else on the committee that you'd like to say? 
Uh, oh, thanks, Ed. I just want to thank everybody. Uh, I think it was a, uh, a great uh, presentation and looking forward to uh, additional comments that people have. Uh, we encourage people to you know, share this uh, presentation with others. Uh, we did our best to try to get the information out, but uh, I truly uh, mean this when I say I think we're um, really honestly looking to engage as many people as we can and get your ideas uh, as we start to think about uh, this next phase of the path. Uh, and hopefully uh, it'll become a great and continued great asset uh, along that section of property. And uh, I think it really fulfills a need to get that term as I was intrigued by the uh, one comment I think that uh, somebody had where they tried to get to Woodlawn Beach and found themselves locked in at uh, the gates at the far end. So uh, this would be a historic uh, time where we would actually have the first uh, public way to get uh, across Lackawanna through Hamburg and down to the beach. So. Uh, thank everyone, and uh, look forward to your to your continued comments. All right, thanks. And uh, with that, I will end the meeting. And don't remember to go to the Survey Monkey website to provide your comments. We would appreciate them. Well, Mike, I think thanks, we can everyone. end the meeting now. <laughs> thanks, everyone. <laughs>